All right. Um, I think everybody can see that. Welcome. It's Friday uh, night comics. It might be Saturday morning where you are or Friday late afternoon or super late Friday, but either way, it's Friday night comics. That's what we call it um, at the Sequential Artist Workshop. Thanks for being here. Um, saw a uh, 501c3 nonprofit. We're here to help people learn to tell stories and we're here to um, bring on lots of new instructors like Audra and everybody else. So really appreciate you joining us. You can find more at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, we've got courses coming up. We've got some winter courses. This digital comics tips and tricks starts tomorrow. If you want to jump on that history of comics, bootleggers gone to freelancing, reading with uh, reading Emily Carroll's work, all sorts of things. And next week, uh, Sanika Fawdi, I'm sorry, I get her name wrong every time. Fada, um is going to do food and comics here on this, on this, um, at this location and time. We've got a new podcast, The Terrible Anvil. We're up to episode seven. We still say two here, but um, go check that out. So thanks for donating. If you've donated today, we survive from tuitions and donations. Um, you can do that at PayPal and Patreon. You can become a sustaining member. There are lots of ways. If you go to the Saw Comics website, you'll learn, and I hope you'll find some links to that. So uh, no inappropriate speech or imagery today. I was just telling Audra about our couple zoom bombings a long time ago we're very protective of that so no trolling or hate speech and keep the sharing at pg-13 thanks and share what you do tonight on fret on social media with the hashtag friday night comics uh you can tag us at comics workshop and i'll put audra's tag in the chat it's audra.stang um and you can join us at members.sawcomics.org where a lot of people are sharing also we've been making pdfs lately and um, like we did this one with Sarah Varen, where people post uploaded their things and um, we're putting them on Seesaw Comics. That's the easiest way to let you see them. So go to seesawcomics.org and find them. And if they're not up now, they're, they'll be up Monday. Or you can make a video with a song like Edgar did. And I'm going to put that in the chat too. Edgar made a song of one of his comics from a few weeks back and it's delightful. So um, in your spare time, after you finish today's drawing, you can you can put that. You can go click on to that. So enjoy memory. Audra, I'm so excited by this because I don't know exactly what it means. That's always super exciting. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. I'm going to I'm going to um, spotlight you, which means you're going to get really big for a second. There oh, boy. Hello. Yeah, oh, see? <laughs> for a second. Nice. And um, wow. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm Audra Stang. Uh, I'm a cartoonist, obviously. Um, I draw a comic called The Audra Show, which has some fiction and autobiography, but um, a lot of my comics deal with memory. And so that's sort of what I wanted to bring to the workshop today. Uh, and so one thing like I found when working with memory is it's really good to have an anchor point. Um, so I thought about like, what's an anchor point that most people probably have, which is a chair and sitting. Um, so uh, I, let me share my screen really quick. Ah, here we go. Screen, share. Um, so here's an example from one of my own comics um, where the anchor point I used was the kitchen that the characters are working in. So these, and also these are in order um, chronologically, um, but they're not direct moments one after the other. There's some space between them with that anchor point of the kitchen. And so let me click through here if I can. Um, here's an example from here by Richard McGuire. Here we go. Um, where it's showing this living room um, and it's a static point in time, but you just see things are moving um, but not moving, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and so here he's actually labeled it like 1957, 1922. Um, and then my last example, which is probably the closest to what we're going to be doing, is this comic by Eric Kostiak Williams, I believe. Um, and this is a riff on here. Um, and it's the perfect example because his chair in this case is the toilet. Um, and so that's what's consistent. But you can see there are all these different indications that it's not necessarily chronological. Like 
you have mm -hmm. the graffiti here in panel three, you notice that even though these are the same characters, they're wearing completely different outfits. Um, so the first activity we're going to do, um, and I'm going to switch cameras actually, so you can see me drawing as well. We're going to just take two minutes um, and I'm going to encourage you to just take maybe 30 seconds to draw, 30 seconds each to draw a chair. Um, I'd encourage you to pick chairs that you have multiple memories in. So this might be like where you sit when you take the bus every single day, or maybe your office job, or maybe just a place on the ground you like to sit. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a chair. Um, so let me go to... Audrey, are we doing multiple chairs or one? We're going to, so I was going to have the warm up be four chairs for 30 seconds. And oh. then we were just going to pick one um, for the longer drawing activity. If okay. I can, let me see, show grid video. I apologize that I'm having no trouble problem. swapping my camera. Um. But regardless of that, uh, I am going to start, I would start the timer for that. Um, I would just take one piece of paper, um, divide it into fours, just draw your four chairs, 30 seconds. Um, and I am going to set a stopwatch. Um, okay, great. Call time while I do that. Okay, so if everybody's ready, we're gonna go with chair one for 30 seconds. Awesome. Thank you. All right, yeah, we see your paper now. I'm gonna end up drawing three chairs because uh, it took me 30 seconds. So we're <laughs> at 28 seconds now um don't worry about these being good like this is really just like the first four things you think of um like let's see like i didn't do this before so i could be doing it with you so i'm thinking of like one of those chairs that my parents used to sit in at my soccer games <laughs> this is like a terrible drawing because it's just supposed to get the idea then we're moving into one minute. So we're going to do another chair. I'm gonna go with the bus I sat on, this bus seat I sat on in elementary school every single day. It's fun to draw a crappy chair in 30 seconds. Yeah, cause it's really just like, you know, with cartooning too, it's just the symbol um, and so it's like, how can I most quickly indicate this is a bus seat? Like in this case, I'm not actually sure there's any indication. And then one more chair. Um, for my last chair, I'm going to go with the lettuce spinner that I sat on at Chipotle sometimes when I felt tired. Wait, you sat on a lettuce spinner? Yeah, it was a lettuce spinner. Oh, no, I need to push my lettuce spinner up. So you oh, can look at that. It. Amazing. Yeah, it's like. I don't know, maybe it comes up to about here, I would say. Like if I was going to draw a person for scale. Um, so that's two minutes. Um, that's a few chairs. Um, so for the longer drawing activity, you're just going to do the same thing again, where you're going to take a piece of paper. I'm folding it, but you don't have to fold it. You can just draw four um, squares or measure it out. Um, and so uh, with this chair, you don't need to draw it from different angles, right? Um, because everything's supposed to be static. It's just what's changing around it. I'm actually gonna try and see if I can zoom this out a little bit. Um, so like, for example. So we're gonna choose one chair and draw, draw it four times? Yeah, um, so you want like, how it's positioned to be static, you know, like in this example, it's exactly posed the same, your zoom is the same. So you're not worried about any of that. Um, but what's going to change is going to be maybe who's sitting in the chair, where the chair is located, what's positioned around it. Um, so for me, I think I'm going to pick 
the lettuce spinner, which is a little bit more difficult because it's more stationary, but we used to roll it into different parts of the restaurant. Different people used to sit on it. Um, and you don't necessarily have to focus on being chronological either. So these four chair memories could follow sequentially, um, but theoretically you could travel back and forth in time. Um, it's up to you. Um, and that's, uh, there's a principle in filmmaking called uh, Kuleshov effect, which is basically when you see one image after the other, um, your brain kind of comes up with an explanation as to why that's happening. So as you build this sequence with these four seemingly disparate memories, when you read them one after the other, uh, it'll actually create something cohesive. Um, and you can tune that depending on what you want that to be. Um, so it's seven eleven now. Um, so let's say, cause we want to do, we want 20 minutes on the top of the hour. So like okay. five minutes per panel or something or four. Yeah. Let's do, let's do five, um, a panel. Yeah. Um, so, so we're doing it full size, like five minutes per panel, choose, choose a different subject in the chair, maybe a different time period for each time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that time period can be really subtle. You know, you could pick one day, maybe, and it's a different hour of the day. Um, it really depends on how long you've been sitting in this chair for uh, is the window of time. Um, cool. That's clear. Sure, I think it is. And so starting now, do we have yeah. our time? Already? All right. Yeah, let's go. Panel one, chair one, or panel one, same chair. Panel one, same chair. And you're doing that salad spinner. What a great idea. Salad spinner is very... It didn't work. So you either had to sit on it or put, um, like, this is actually what I'm going to do for the first. You would have to put a, uh, let me make sure that's visible. You'd have to put a box of beans on it to keep the lid closed um, or else the <laughs> lid would fly off of it, which wasn't safe, but that didn't matter. And then eventually we had to stop using the beans because the beans were refrigerated. Um, so we started using rice. But the problem with the rice is that the motion of the lettuce spinner would um, cause the bags of rice to come open and they would spill <laughs> on the floor. So it wasn't great. And so also, too, like when I'm thinking about this lettuce spinner drawing, um, there used to be a recycling bin behind it that got moved like partway, like maybe halfway through when I worked at this Chipotle. So it's like by adding that prop in the background, um, it's it's a way of showing instead of telling like when something is happening, um, especially if you're making the kind of comics that don't necessarily have like omniscient narration, um, or if you aren't labeling things. Uh, and also, let me see, we have about three minutes left on this drawing, so you can just jam pack it full of details. It's funny because after doing the 30s, five minutes feels like very luxurious. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
It's interesting too, because like with this, you know, I'm finding like, uh, like this part of the restaurant didn't have any windows. So then it's sort of like, okay, I have to find a different way to convey maybe that this is morning shift versus night shift. Um, and so with that sort of showing, I'm thinking like, okay, well, what's something specific that you would only see in the morning and for Chipotle, that would be the lettuce actually um because if a chipotle is operating properly all the lettuce should be spun by 12 noon and i don't know i really like specificity in comics too um like i i'm really a fan of uh ms harkness whose comic time out of tension uh time under tension uh uh -huh. came out recently um because there's a lot of specificity with her stuff. Um, like she portray portrayed a street I lived on. Um, and so there were things, how do I put it specific to Pittsburgh? Um, and that made it feel more real. And then for me, somebody who's been there, I could appreciate that. But then also if you've never actually been there before, it creates, uh, you know, just creates a greater sense of reality than necessarily drawing like the symbol for a dumpster or a lamp. Uh, a lot of things very regionally too. Cool. I think it was, I think it was Gilbert actually. That was like, I Gilbert Hernandez, who was like, I realized that I was drawing this one type of street lamp I saw in LA like 12 years ago or something like that. So this is my first drawing um and we are about to switch to our next yes. panel um i'm just gonna set the timer for that so now we'll be starting panel two all right more lettuce spinning. okay panel two do you know what you're going to do for panel two me yeah. No, um, I don't. I actually, this is something I, I like not knowing necessarily what I'm going to do um, because I like the, how do I put it? The grid, like Frank Santoro's called it like paper jazz where it's sort of like you have your set grid um, <laughs> and then you're sort of like improvising within that established grid. And, and for this is a memory activity too. Like I'm kind of just letting it happen. So for this, yeah. I'm thinking of like, when somebody would uh like there was like this little crevasse behind the lettuce spinner that people would stand in and that can also sort of act as an opportunity maybe to show the scale of the object by having somebody like stand in this weird little space oh, or nice. like maybe they're having you know and then it's like right here i'm thinking oh like maybe i can be showing different ways we had to hold down the lettuce spinner so this first uh -huh. one was the rice and now the second one. Um, I really like to think on my feet as I do comics. Uh, and this is kind of like that too. I mean, obviously, but even when I'm working on the finished page, like I don't like knowing necessarily the dialogue or the layout of the panel until I get to it. It's interesting to try and draw and talk at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing great. These are great drawings. It's Thank really you. cool to see. So what, um, is this afternoon on this panel? What do you think? Yeah, I would say it's going into afternoon. I mean, ideally, lettuce should be done spinning at a time, but it doesn't always mean it will be. I was a kitchen manager at Chipotle, uh, so I know too much about these things, <laughs> but... um. They're designed, so they're designed to make about $5,000 a day, um, but the restaurant I worked at made $10,000 a day because I worked on the University of Pittsburgh campus. Oh, um, wow. So you have this model that's being extrapolated or being scaled up in a way that maybe it's not meant to be scaled up. Um, Was it and sometimes things didn't always go well. Um, but also, I only did that job for three months, so I might have been the thing that wasn't going well. <laughs> it sounds like it gave you a lot to think about for three months. 
It's true. It's very, I could talk about that for a while, actually. There's a lot to uh, being a prep cook and a, I, I didn't like being a kitchen manager as much, but being a cook, you do, it's sort of the same thing where you're doing like circuits. Like it might be like 40 onions, 40 onions, 40 onions. And that's very similar to drawing comics to me. Um, and let's see, there's about a minute 30 left in this panel, by the way. Uh, I love that idea that being a prep cook is like being a cartoonist. Yeah, it's very much more than grill. Like grill is very uh, involved, but with prep, it's a little bit more, like I said, with the circuits. And like, I don't know, like here's a detail I'm thinking of. the They have like these rubber slip guards that they used to. And that's that's why I love doing activities like this, because you'll naturally end up remembering things as you do it. Like I'm thinking of how, yeah, uh, in restaurants, it's not legal to wear non-slip shoes. So if you don't have non-slip shoes, they provide you with these little black rubber slippers that are disgusting um, to put onto your regular shoes so that you don't slip and fall while you're working. And you're just remembering these things now? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, cool. once I, because Chipotle was my first restaurant job, but once I was into it for a little while, like I... Uh, and if you finish your panel early, you can go back. Like I'm sort of adding like a little bit of extra shading to my spinners. Um, but like what you could kind of tell who was a serious kitchen worker from a less serious kitchen worker, if they had slip guards or if they had purchased non-slip. <laughs> it's very silly. All right. So now we're going to go on to our okay. third panel. And yeah, I think I am just going to do like an afternoon. Also, I really, these activities are also good, oh, oops, um, for characters. Um, if you're somebody who's dealing in fiction and maybe you're trying to figure out more about a character, uh, doing this kind of activity for a for like a place your character spends a lot of time is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also really good for set design too, um, because you really have to think about things practically. Um, or like why something would be there. Like this is an avocado box um, because sometimes when the lettuce spinner wasn't in use, it might just get used as like a surface to place things. Yeah. Oh, what a great avocado box. Doesn't seem like you worked there only three months. You've got all these details. Oh, well, I, I was Never. a... Let me think. I worked there about one year and three months, but I only was a kitchen manager... Oh. For, yeah, I uh, I worked my way. I did the cook roles for a while, but I I didn't realize that being a kitchen manager wasn't cooking. Um, it was more managing than kitchen, which I found disappointing. Um, I really I think like I really like cooking. Um, it's a lot like cartooning, and it was something I learned to do really or not really late but i learned to do it in my late 20s because i just needed a way to make money and so to learn this completely new skill like years after college was really yeah it was really cool because so much of it is just i don't know it's very tactile um like learning how to feel how you hold your knife and i think drawing's the same way a lot of it is just building the muscle memory and sort of learning to feel uh you know, like 
I don't know, like even just the way the pencil sits in your hand and stuff like that. All right, we have about two minutes left in this panel, by the way. So did you see that show, The Bear? I haven't. That's so funny. I've, it's been recommended to me. I told somebody this afternoon I would try it. Um, I always feel skeptical about restaurant shows. Um, but I heard good. it was good. Yeah, it's good. If you just watch one, if you just want to watch one, there is one that they shot in all one take. And it is like in the insane restaurant shift from hell. And it's wonderful. That's what somebody told me. They said that the depiction of the stress of the rest, because I, I I was under the idea that it was a uh, like a romance show. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> me, and my, me and my boyfriend uh, worked in restaurants together, but it wasn't very romantic. I would argue maybe it was it was a, the opposite of romantic because it was because it, it was such a like tense situation and then there's that comfort level because you know that person um but i don't know i have to give it a shot yeah so this is like all the lettuce is swept up it's the afternoon We've got our avocados here talking about the bear in the chat those of us who have seen it <laughs> oh wow i didn't even i've been missing the chat oh that's okay mostly uh mishka says her few months at kinko's yielded a ton of stories but it came out kinks at first and she was quick to correct that um and then some other people talking about restaurants all right and now we're going to move on to our last panel all right let me put that in i'm gonna kind of do like an easy way out of this one i'm just gonna make it dark restaurants closed it's over you want to see something like there's nothing sorted yet like is anybody putting their ashes out in the um in the lettuce spinner or spitting in it <laughs> you know i actually worked at disney and i did see where um it is actually true that people place their ashes in the haunted mansion ride that's a true fact oh uh, <laughs> and i believe there are cremains located in the in the part of the ride with the dancing, uh, where it's like the ballroom of dancing women, I'm pretty sure that there are, there's somebody's cremains located beneath one of the plates. Uh, <laughs> and I don't remember what it was, if they were like a big fan or something, because I, I did the lights on as a Disney cast member, you get to do a lights on backstage tour of some of the rides. And so Whoa. I did the Haunted Mansion and they addressed the, uh, the ashes rumors um and i was um, also a custodian um but i never had to clean any ashes thank god wait so people would just like hop off the ride and dump some cremated cremated ashes and then hop back on the ride or there's like a it? there's like a well it's like uh there's like you're on this little conveyor thing like you're like in a conveyor thing so people might just bring like they might like subtly like bring ashes to pour over the side and to wear the, I don't know what it's called, like the conveyor belt of chairs that it's pulling you mm. forward through the dark ride. Right. Um, yeah, people would in fact do this um, because it does sound made up, but people are big Disney fans and they're like, I want to rest at Disney. And then people's <laughs> family members are like, <laughs> I'm going to do it for them. Uh, but then they have that... to shut the ride down for hours. Um, so oh that's, I, yeah, that's cool. I mean, was that in, was that in LA or was that in Florida? I worked in LA? Florida. Oh yeah. Um, but that's, I think that's just a common, I think dumping your loved ones remains and Disney rides is 
it's most common on haunted mansion which i guess makes sense given the ghostly <laughs> spiritual nature of it but uh i think this is just something that happens people love disney but i guess some places are more renowned within the disney fandom for final uh resting place than others Maybe. So I'm writing this in the chat. So you you said it's on the haunted rides or one specific the haunted mansion ride. The said. haunted mansion, yes. Because wow. um, there's a few rides that exist both at Walt Disney World and Walt Disney Land, um, and haunted mansion is one of them. Um, I can't think of the name of it anymore, but the boat ride. Um, I think Pirates of the Caribbean is one, but it's been a while. I worked there about 10 years ago, actually. Oh, yeah, we'll have like the cord wrapped up too, because it's the end of the day. So, oh. pour it on top of the machine. Eli says he worked for Wendy's and uh, someone covered the entire bathroom with squeezed out ketchup packets. So he had to clean up that. And also the manager sold pot and would leave it for his customers in the plastic silverware counter. <laughs> and Jamie says it's too bad they closed the Jaws ride at Universal. That's where I want my ashes to go. Oh, well, didn't know they closed that. Closed Jaws. I only went to Universal once. I thought the rides were definitely cooler than Disney's. The Indiana Jones ride was really cool. All right. Boom. With a very loud alarm. Okay, so here's mine. But I think we're going to share. I've been mm -hmm. sharing mine the whole time. So I think it's, we should be. It's great. I, I love it. Can you zoom out just a hair and we can see it both? If you can't. Okay. Yes, if I can oh, cool. lift the camera. It's backwards oh, no. also, actually. You know what? Actually, I'm going to switch cameras and just hold it up. Okay. Yeah, it's not backwards. It's more practical. Oops. Let's see. Okay. I think it's still backwards, actually. It is. No, it's, it's forwards for us. Oh, right. You yeah. told me about this. Yes. No, oh, it's so, so yeah. it's it's so somber and strange without any it's people. <laughs> it it was person. working there was somber. Um but yeah, you know, so it's like a basic like morning to night, you're spinning uh -huh. your lettuce, holding it shut, avocados closed, and then it just starts all over again the next day. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks so much. So we can take a look at and see what other people did if you want. Yeah. Audra, I'm going to ask you to raise your Zoom hand again, and but okay, let's raise the Zoom. It'll probably un run raise. We know how that goes, but we'll try. Raise hand. And then, yeah, some people are already eager to show. So let's let's see what they did. Chris, we'll go to Chris, then share, then then uh, Helen. All right, here we go, and then Jeannie. Yeah, all right. Great. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, about 25 years ago, I got this little IKEA stool. It was like twelve dollars, and we had to put it together. And it's just a workhorse around the house, it, so I can use it to practice the guitar on. It serves as a extra seat when wow. we rent chairs for like a family dinner or something. And um, we use it as a Zoom stand to hold the laptop when we're talking to relatives. Um, it's just a generally useful thing. <laughs> yeah, I really like how you because the stool's stationary. I like how you move the people around it. That was really smart. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> It's great. great. Cool. Thanks, Chris. I like that. Um, Cheryl. Here we go. Um, I don't know what to do. I started drawing like this schoolroom chair like, when they're all stacked up. Desks are stacked like maybe in the summer and then during school. And then I really regretted my angle and I didn't know what to do. And then I added a, little, a hand picking up a tiny chair. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I love the change of scale yeah. like that. Yeah, right? that's what I was thinking. 
And it makes you wonder, are those tiny chairs in the first three panels or, or are they not, you know? Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. Okay, we'll go to Helen next. And then after that, we'll go to Jeannie and then Eli and then Emily. Okay, I um, bought these fancy chairs to have in my office um, for clients with these nice blue leather cubes. And the idea was to have them for clients meeting and the daytime, I mean, actually I ended up napping in them for a power nap. Sure. Um, and then they came home and I used them as the chair where I would come in. I do now in the morning, read the Washington post um, in my pajamas. And then mm -hmm. when I leave, my dog takes over and sits in the chair. I like the like yeah I like that like for yours you were thinking like what unites them and all of them like rest like there's rest and like all four yeah that's true yeah it was fun cool. thanks thanks Helen nice to see you uh let's see we'll go to Jeannie nice to be here. here this was fun um my three chairs, and then I decided on a brewer chair. Um, so I just started drawing it um, to get a jump on drawing. <laughs> so anyway, brewer chair was um, my ex-husband's favorite chair. I don't know. I, I had mixed feelings about them. Still do. <laughs> so anyway, it's just me uh, interacting with a chair. And then at the end, taking it out of the room <laughs> yeah yeah that's I don't know it's just really that's really cool I like that like you thought to put it upside down because it is I feel like the way human mind works is that it's like okay I have this constraint but like how can I break out of this constraint um yeah, yeah I really like that yeah I, I turned it upside down to to draw it oh <laughs> cool Jeannie thanks We'll go, mm -hmm. go to Eli next, and then Emily. Hi. Um, I picked the red chair because I didn't want to keep drawing all these patterns um, four yeah. times. Um, although I love all of these chairs. Um, this is my old office chair, and it's one of those little things that goes up and down and then also twirls around. And sometimes it will, like, suddenly drop down. Um, so I use it to work and then I also use it to very dangerously, usually while wearing flip flops, trying yeah. to stand on it and reach a tall, something that's up high, uh, and try not to have it shoot out from under me. Um, I definitely use it very often to twirl around on, um, cause sitting at my desk is super boring. And then, uh, it's really good to use to play the guitar cause it doesn't have arms to bang your, um, your guitar up on and also you can twirl around while you are playing your guitar so that's my little chair thing is that watercolor <laughs> or is that mark no it's these um what are they called tombow pens oh yeah those are yes i love the tombow oh i don't have one on me and nice god this this one red is i got to get another one because i've worn it out it's such, such a good red it's very powerful um, yeah yeah it's one of my favorite colors. Thank you. This is a really good one. I'm loving everybody's drawings. Thanks, Eli. We've got Emily next. All Thank right. you. Wow, this is so cool. I've never been to one of these. And it's like amazing. You oh, guys well. are so talented. Um, I don't know if this is going to show super well. I'm going to pick up the camera one sec. But um, ugh. OK. All right. That worked. Okay, so it's like, oh my gosh, it's so disorienting. It's I like, um, <laughs> I think, okay, you kind of can't tell, but I messed up pretty badly and started in the center. And um, see if it focuses. You could also come back to me. If I can, like, you want us to come back? Sure, yeah, that'd be great. I see that it's pretty, it's pretty layered. Yeah, we'll come yeah. back. Raise okay. your hand again. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Kate and then we'll come back to Emily at some point. Hi, Kate. 
Hello. Embarrassing. Uh, okay, so mine was a chair that we got like at a thrift store that was a, it was like a lazy boy kind of thing. It was pale green. Um, we ended up just calling it the great green chair and it was so comfortable and we got it as like a rocking chair when I was about to have a baby. And then here is my kid kind of falling asleep on it with me holding him. And then here is, there was a point in which he was the exact size between the two arms of the chair. And so he took a picture. And then this is a different location where it's um, my cat. Yeah. Kind of fits in that space now. <laughs> Those are great drawings. And the great thing about the note cards too is that lets you, you know, you can play with the sequence however you want, even if you initially drew it, you know, straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. It was fun. I think the next one would be it sitting on the uh, on the curb when we finally got rid of it and put it on. Yeah. <laughs> it so we got a lot of furniture. Um, I hope it still lives on and that somebody else is enjoying enjoying that chair. <laughs> For sure. Thanks, Kate. And welcome back. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and Nancy next, and then Becky. So I have. Um two of those Pong chairs from Ikea. And um, this one is in my living room and it has one of those yoga blankets on, on it also to complete the look. And um, anyway, uh, so for, um, I, really, I had a group of three cats uh, from, their, from kittenhood well into their teens mm -hmm. and they're no longer with me. But this pic, the first picture is every, every night at about six o'clock, Archie and Casey, both spayed, would sit in that chair and Archie would try to have sex with Casey for about five minutes and then she'd get pissed off and bat, bat him with her paw and leave every day. And then uh, Archie died in that chair. Um, he had many health problems, but um, he his I guess he just had a heart attack. Something happened with his heart. And I was there holding him uh, near in the chair and you can see that. And I'm not going to cry. And then um, this one is last summer I broke my elbow. And uh, this is when I graduated from the couch to the chair uh, a few weeks in. And I was always putting these weird outfits together that sometimes really looked good just to accommodate the broken elbow. And this, now I have two new cats. Uh, well, not that new anymore. They're about four years old. And this is Max, the giant orange Maine Coon. Same chair. <laughs> yeah that's great i mean that juxtaposition is really good i mean that's that's my favorite thing about these type of things is yeah like that funny moment and then that's really really that hit yeah yeah thank you oh, thank you nancy geez. okay we'll go to becky and then rebecca Here we go. hi um i don't know how my lighting is Th this was just my chair study um and the the chair that I chose out of these was um, this one, which when I just was drawing it from memory is completely doesn't look like itself. But then thanks to the internet, I found uh, found a reference drawing. So my grandparents had this uh, step stool, yellow step stool chair, which some of you may know. And it's uh, it has these little steps that can fold in and out. My grandma Tilly used to sometimes cut my hair in that chair. Um, this reminded me of being in their kitchen, which had a dr junk drawer that had a lot of junk in it. Um, and then I just wanted to talk about how fun and satisfying it was to fold and unfold the steps from under the yellow chair. So thanks for this exercise. I thought it was really nicely anchored and very, very simple and easy to build out from. So thanks a lot. Thank you. I love thanks. the watercolors or whatever that was. <laughs> thanks, Becky. We've got a Rebecca now. Here we go. Hi. I also really love this prompt. I love how chairs invite so many stories about rest and home and family and work. Um, 
This is my chair sheet. Can you see it well enough? Should yeah. I turn the light on brighter? I, I can see, see the chairs. All right, this is the stool I'm sitting in right now in my kitchen. This is a big leather chair in my living room that was here in this apartment before I was. This is the throne chair that I have in my art studio room. And the last one is, I used to call it a wooden love seat, a bench that had worm compost in it in the public garden that's across the street from my home. And I felt very much like it was my bench in my garden. Um, and so I chose the leather chair in the living room. It was very interesting, the memories that came back with this prompt. I also experimented with not making the four panels, not yeah. drawing them out. Um, the first one here, I feel like it's kind of blurry. I'm going to try turning a light on really quick. <laughs> Just in case that makes it a lot better. <laughs> okay. Um, so this one is me sitting in the chair and my cat running circles around me and we were listening to the Barbra Streisand and Donna Summer song, Enough is Enough. <laughs> and we were like dancing to it together. It was this cinematic moment where I was like, I can never tell the story of this to anyone. Like no one will ever quite understand this moment. <laughs> um, the chair came from my roommate, Linda, who passed away many years ago. She was much older than me and I drew Linda sleeping in the chair with her dog on her lap. And I wrote, Linda told me she used to fall asleep with her dogs in this chair. Mm -hmm. The third panel I wrote one time I fell, I found it very distracting, interestingly, to be listening to stories while also going this deep into my own memories. So I think that's why I kind of wrote my words out of order, but I wrote one time I fell, my phone fell in through a crack in the skeleton and I discovered a hole in the back that had presumably been made by a mouse maybe long before I was born <laughs> and I remember having to turn the chair around in some crazy ways to try to shake my phone out of it and the very last panel I wrote I've sat across a lot of laps in that chair mm. I used to call it like a love seat for one that's how it's built almost like a couch but just to fit one so it's really easy to sit on the arms and sit across someone without putting all my weight on them. Oh, well, that's my chair stories. It's surprising how personal it feels. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you. <laughs> really wonderful, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Those drawings. Okay, we'll go to Nikki next and then Kathy. Here we go. I hope I can't hear you yet, Nikki. See if you can. Hello, everybody. Unmute. There we there go. We go. Right, hi everybody. I've just been, um, I've got a problem <laughs> showing my work. <laughs> Somebody's just jumped up and fallen asleep. But um, I've drawn this as my chair. This is a whalebone I found, and it just sits in the studio. And the cats absolutely adore it. And excuse me, Paddington. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, baby. Thank you, darling. Yeah, wow. look, you can see it. Oh, here she goes. Look. So that's it's their favorite chair in the universe. So, and I want to thank you because it's, I've been wanting to draw it for a while. So it was a good excuse. Oh. So, um, and I couldn't think of the past either because I was listening to the talking and watching the chat. And that's the point when she jumped up on the book. So, <laughs> but that was great. And I, I just enjoyed getting to, you know, explore that a bit more. I'll have to paint it sometime. So thank you. Awesome, Nikki. Thanks. Oh, those songs are lovely. Um, we're gonna we're gonna scoot over to Edgar, who has a concert to make. So we're, oh, we're cool. Putting him putting him up in the in the queue, and then we'll come back to Kathy. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, also for mentioning the video, and Audra, thank you for the inspiration. I deviated from the script a little bit. I use four different chairs but I call it shared my life through the decades. Here I am, age four, Edgar has his own little chair to sit in. This chair is just for me to sing or have some play. Uh, that is a uh, table for the ideal. Uh, there's a table with the strong seat. Uh, that. Time for Raven to open 
public campaign and lead for the back. Edgar, we might have to. Uh... Page 25. Can you see me? No, not really. You're, oh. you're in it's really bad, and, and at least I'm not hearing it. Oh, I think we just lost him. That's a bummer. So, Edgar, you'll have to make another song and post it somewhere. I hope you will. Thank you. We'll go to Kathy next. There we go. Hello. Hey. All right. So uh, we were very, very proud to get our very first adult couch, which the furniture store told Ramona and I was not purple, but aubergine. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> And uh, so we got that in 1999, and then a few years later, uh, it became the the year of the lying on the couch with recovering from cancer. And then the happy year of getting my dog and the idea that we would never let the dog on the couch went out the window pretty quickly. And then <laughs> what happened to the couch after Eva the cat? So um, we no longer have that couch. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But we loved it very much. So I love your lines. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for this. Let cats get away with too much. Okay, we'll go to Sally next, then Quinn, then Goody. Let's see. I this is very scratchy. I very much not in good hand tonight, but I just did uh it's all really a very short sequence because it's being on a cajon, playing a cajon in a group yeah. with a bunch of people. And he uh, asked me to do um, the rhythm for Billy Billy Jean, the Michael Jackson song, and I'm freaked out because it's so important. And then I'm still freaked out. And then I start really getting into it. And then I'm really, really into it, and I'm having a blast. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love the color. Yeah, I mean, it definitely shows. Like, it's very joyful to look at. <laughs> Thank Maybe. you. Like getting rid of yourself. <laughs> I like those loose your own way. Thanks, Sally. Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Quinn next, and then Goody, and then Onita, then Nancy. Here we go. Okay, so I did mine digitally. Um, I don't know if I can screen share, but I can drop it in chat. Um, oh, or can I? Uh, I can. And I, I, do I, I can give permission you to do that. Just for a minute. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I did oh, not realize I wouldn't be able to do that at first. Um. Is it working? Um. Oh, do I have permission to uh -huh. share screen? Oh, okay. Is it? Uh. Or wait, screen. Sorry, I'm a Zoom noob. Um. <laughs> I also have been learning a lot tonight about Zoom. <laughs> Um, so we get it or no? I think I'm so sorry. Um usually there's a button that says share screen or Okay, else. I think yeah, is it there you go. Oh there Going we go. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So here's my whoop, move my art program onto this monitor here. So oh. um right. So I, it was funny, I was actually drawing chairs anyway. I picked up a book on Charles Eames' work this week. So I saw this workshop and I was oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, chairs. chair, yeah. I, I love that chair. Um, but I ended up, I thought I was going to do this chair that we used to have in my um, house when I was a toddler. But I drew this chair that was, it was a stool at the boarding school that I went to in high school. And it's a very uncomfortable chair, and I only drew three because I just ran out of time. Um, but it was a very uncomfortable chair. I had a lot of uncomfortable memories. So it ended up being kind of dialogue heavy. But I just remember, like, um, having a lot of moments with, like, the staff there where I think I was kind of, like, I mean, I'm sure this is a common experience among, like, bookish, like, comics people, but I was very quiet and always told I was like mature for my age. So there was a lot of like, you know, stuff I shouldn't have been privy to where staff would be like, well, you know, you're cool. Like you're an adult and I wasn't. Um, so the first one um, I was remembering just this 
a uh, new student that was coming and she like they had said that um, her parents had said that she was allergic to cinnamon and red food dye um, and I remember the staff kind of reacting in this way like oh yeah okay like weird and they were like so we'll see and um, just like as time went on they would kind of tell me more things or it was like I'm not supposed to tell you so don't say anything but like you know this other student like she did this thing I was always just kind of like oh wow okay and um nothing really came of it but this last one is I remember like being in that kitchen and uh around Christmas time they made Christmas cookies and it was like the recipe called for cinnamon but the uh the one staff member was like you know oh no I'll use nutmeg and then told me exclusively that like they actually like I used cinnamon and nothing happened like How'd I know? So wow. it was a weird, like, yeah, just remembering all of those things. Yeah. Um, I didn't mean for it to get heavy at all, but yeah, that's, a little that's, heavy. Yeah. Sorry for cutting you off, but that's what, that's what I really like the anchor point for is that if you do start to get too far in where you're like, uh, like you kind of can be like, Oh yeah, I came here for the chair. And you can yeah. kind of like back out and be like, okay, I came for the chair. Um, yeah. Like somebody else said in the chat, I really like, the not showing of the faces. Um, that's really nice. And then, yeah, like the Christmas Thank decoration you. showing the time change. Yeah, the faces thing, I think, was just kind of, I was like, oh, no, I didn't leave enough room for the dialogue. But I really liked the effect. So, yeah, it's very intuitive. Um, yeah. Cool. But, yeah, I really liked this prompt. Like, thank you guys for this work. Um, All right. Thanks so much. Do I we'll have to, to do anything to stop sharing my screen? Or wait, uh, oh, here we go. There we go, okay. thanks. What a goodie next. Let's see. Um, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, hi. Thanks for the thing. I came in late, so I didn't know we were supposed to do a chair. Mm -hmm. um, so I did, I did this. Nice. And I turned up the screen brightness so you could actually see it, but that's it at the store because it was actually sitting in the checkout lane yeah. and uh, I'd been looking for it and I couldn't find it. And I was like, Oh, well, and then it was in the checkout lane. And I was like, can I buy that? And she was like, Yep. <laughs> and I was like, cool. And then that was it on the car on the way home. And then that's me sleeping on the couch with it. And then I put it on the floor cause I didn't have a third location. So I put it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though it wasn't a chair, I mean, yeah, it still still works, you know, like that sequence, you know. Yeah, really nice. So, Thanks, and then I started a chair one, but then I was like, well, I already have this much done, so I yeah, finished it. Fine. Awesome. But thank you. Right. It's a good reminder to share on social media, people. I'll put it in the chat where to share and what to hashtag and stuff like that. We'll go to Anita next. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, so I did four chairs, a rocking chair, a squishy chair, my office chair. Well, actually, my room chair when I was a kid and then like a, a vinyl chair that we have around uh, a dining room table. And then I got confused by the sequence of it being the same but a sequence. So I just, I don't know. It makes sense to me. But um, so the first one is I'm okay. And the next one and the other character is saying no. And then I got this. This is not what you think. And then I can do this. Barely. <laughs> okay i need somebody else to do this for me exactly <laughs> so like it's it, for some reason like i drew a clock and it was like only three o'clock and i was like the same chair in every sequence and then the picture in every sequence and like no time change and i was like well what would happen in a minute and so i just thought well stages of anxiety and trying to do something other than sit yeah <laughs> So like, 
that's kind of what it is. So it's, I guess the little bunny on the chair is like the inside and the bunny on the outside is, is the actual bunny. And it's, but it's kind of, it's sort of abstract, I guess. And sort of two track at the same time. I guess I have two track on my mind for homework right now. So anyway, this was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that with the, I'm glad you said that with the clock too. Cause I was thinking that where I was like, how is all of this happening in this like one little minute of time? Yeah. So I picked up on that. Cool. 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 Thank you. Thanks, this Annie. was cool. Okay. We'll go to Nancy next. And then. Okay. This was fun. Thanks. Um, these are my chairs. The art room stool that the principal told me I had to paint all 36 of them. Uh, and then we have um, a chair that I don't have yet that I really love to have a stuffy over stuff, comfortable chair to read in. My art room chair at home and then my saddle. And I just made me remember that the trouble started in the art room when the, we painted the chairs with different uh, designs on them. And uh, then the kids started fighting over. They actually cared which stool they sat on. And that became a serious problem for me for a while. Um, but here I am helping someone paint mixed colors. And the next one, the kids were always sticking their legs under the stool part and flipping the chairs over on themselves. <laughs> it only happened in second and third grade. But, you know, <laughs> some of them like to keep it going. Standing on it to change the Promethean bulb. And then um, after school, the chairs all had to be put up on the table with the seats up because if you put them on the table seats down, they, the rust rings would show up on the kids' khaki pants. <laughs> More great pizza. It's from third to fourth is funny because I like that the person's standing on the stool and then the next panel, like the stool is standing on top of the like, you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's funny. It's good. Awesome. Thanks, Nancy. We'll go to Zach next. Let's see. Hey, everyone. Uh, this was fun. I've never really had time constraints. I've never done like a thing like this, but uh, I, I drew this wicker chair that my Aunt Carol gave me with uh, her desk. And it's like been a family chair. And I, that's what I, I draw it uh, and like read it. And then this is a chair that I drew my friend, Sam. He, he was the first friend in our friend group in high school to like get a job. And the first thing he bought, he saved up like $200 and he bought this chair at Kmart and he was so proud of it. He called it his chair. Uh, and it, well, he, no, he called it the chair and we would go over and we'd be like, you want to sit on the chair? And he'd be like, yeah, we want to sit on the chair. And so we'd all take turns sitting on the chair. Um, and then this was like one of those reading chairs in the library at school that like had three levels and it was really scary when you hit the third one. And that was a, I didn't finish that, but that was a bucket when I worked at Jimmy John's pickle bucket. Nice. Uh, but I, uh, so I did, um, I did, I did it really fast. This is really scratchy. All of your guys is, it looks so good. Mine is like, but uh, th this is me sitting at my uh, desk and I'm, uh, I got a water and then I'm gone. But my cat, she's getting up uh, onto my, my chair and then uh, she, uh, she knocks over the water and then, I come back some other time and uh, I'm like, oh, no, my books are wet. But she's she's here and she's like, she doesn't care. She's happy. If I could draw another another panel, I'd probably just pet my cat. But. Yeah, I like that. I like that you use the environment a lot around the chair, too. And I like the chair. The chair is really good. <laughs> we Yeah, we, we all love the chair. It's awesome. awesome Thank Zach. you. This was awesome. Thanks so much. We'll go to Candy next. Here we go. Hi, friends. Um, okay. I hate that I have to physically be on camera to show my stuff, but I mean, I like seeing everybody else on camera. Um, so here are my four chairs at first. Um, they're just chairs of the past. Um, my I favorite Ikea chair that I had at my house. Um, and then my friend had this hanging egg chair when I was a kid, uh, a desk, school desk, and uh, my husband's recliner. So then this was bringing back memories. Um, we, me and my husband moved uh, to help his mom and with her, but it was kind of bringing back memories of, of me sitting in my chair, my Ikea chair for many years. So here we go. Um, 
there I am looking at the Ikea catalog, like wanting this chair. And every time I would go to Ikea, like I desperately wanted that like loungy chair. And I finally got it. I'm so excited. I'm watching TV with my loungy chair for a brief moment in time. A couple of years, we had a, a wabbit and that was the wabbit on the loungy chair. And as I'm drawing, I remembered, oh, yeah, this chair actually had, like, an arm. Like, I forgot the arm and the other one. And um, now the chair lives in the basement covered in stuff. And there's some boxes. So it's like this is the life history of this chair. But with the hope that eventually we're going to make a space and, and bring it out again. So. Showing the, the image cycle. of the chair in the magazine was really smart. I wouldn't have thought of that. It's really cool. Thank you. Thanks, Candy. Love the Thank colors you. of that. All right. Emily is back. Let's see if Emily's figured out the camera. Um, Hi. I'm going to link the uh, okay. Instagram. I, I like to put it on Instagram really fast, but I'll just hold it up and see if he can make it out. So I started with my therapist's chair. I totally messed up the sequential thing too because I just started in the middle and then I was like, oh my god, I'm not supposed to go there. <laughs> so I went back up to this corner and like drew in her like bookcases and stuff. And then this is kind of what it would look like entering the office. So it's like there's the chair in the corner and then there's just like some little me's going through it and her little basket of like used up tissues and stuff and that's the chair from her perspective like head on yeah um, I don't know I felt like I didn't know what was happening the whole time and I was just like kind of grabbing I didn't have my art supplies so I just like was using my really crummy stuff that I have at my desk so this is like a struggle piece for sure <laughs> I, I mean I'm looking at it on Instagram I like it the way and honestly the way that you uh uh laid it out it reminds me of lauren i don't know if you're familiar with lauren weinstein um she's an autobio cartoonist i really like but it sort of reminds me of that um and showing the different faces and the different angles too is really interesting like the over like i don't know how to put it like overlapping but simu simultaneously occurring perspective because mm -hmm. it is happening at the I'm same time around for any more people who stick their hand really nice emily thanks i'm gonna look into lauren weinstein thank you yeah She's Weinstein on Instagram, I think. All right. And uh, we'll go to the couch is so Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. My voice yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say a little fun fact before I get into my comic. It's uh, 4 30 in the morning over here. So technically, I'm into Monday. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I'm from Iran, actually. Wow, nice. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for hosting these. They are very fun. Uh, so since I'm a university student, I get to deal with a lot of subway and trains. And since I have to like travel a lot between home and university, so I have to deal with the chairs over there. Uh, now, there is this specific kind of chair. Is this like, uh, yeah, that's better. That you will only get in a very, you know, older kind of train that you will get yeah. very far between and they have like a gap between the wall and the chair that's really cool now usually you don't get to ever sit on them because it's at the far end of the train and that's usually very very <laughs> filled with people and polluted and as you can see i'm dying 8, 8 a.m in the morning where i'm going to university now sometimes i i get the chance to sit on them and i usually sleep because well, it's in the morning and I'm tired and I have exams and I don't want to think about that very much. But my favorite thing about the chair is that sometimes I get to actually go and sit between the gap between the <laughs> chair and the wall. <laughs> it's very cozy. I don't know why. It's very cold, but it is very cozy. And I have been told by multiple strangers that uh, this is a very, very cat-like uh, behavior, which just inflamed me to do it a lot more. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I so love the drawing of the crowds. That's so beautiful. And like somebody else said, the uh, the red for the hair. Yeah. Yeah. I've been told that I have red hair, although I don't see it very much, but um, I usually do try to draw myself with it because it's nice to be told that I have red hair. <laughs> Thank you for this prompt. It was really fun to draw it. And 
it was such a great comic. Thanks, Aram. Welcome back. Glad to see you again. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay, we'll go to Sarah next. So this will be our last one. There we go. Oh, we can't hear you. Try again. Uh, I'm from yeah. Iran, and uh, it's also almost uh, 5 a.m. here. Um, so we're basically Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I want to show you uh, the chair I kind of grew up with. Uh, here, the first panel. Um, um, my brother and I used to uh, sit both on this chair and uh, watch cartoons. And the next panel, I draw myself um, uh, dyeing my hair for the first time uh, with the help of my friend. Um, and here. I draw my cat. Uh, his name is Harry. Um, he he usually sleeps on uh, the, this chair and won't um, let me uh, sit on this. And here, that's me. And uh, doing my university homework, drawing, painting, and this chair. I have lots of memories on this. Um, thank you so much. Um, I brought my friend to this um, workshop Hi. too. Um, <laughs> uh, can she also uh, show her a comic? Sure. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, so this is my chair. This is a little town. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, um, this is a subway chair because I use the subway a lot. And oh, this is oh, no, it's, yeah, it's better. This is a chair my mom wanted so much, and uh, I forced her to buy it for herself finally. So this is a memory. This is a chair I uh, where I worked uh, last summer, and. I wanted to sit on it, but my boss wouldn't let me, so it's that. And this is a chair for uh, my school and uh, my university where I do my test, and it's very stressful. And my comic is um, this one. I changed my major in, in the university and um, a high school a lot, so this is about that. This is uh, me when I was in a very, very wrong major. <laughs> and uh, this is me when I first changed my major. It was a little better. This is me for my... Um... Sorry, I don't know the word for English. My first major in <laughs> university. And this is me now, where I study philosophy of art, uh, which is my favorite major so far, and I'm a little bit happier in each one. Yeah, see, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, it was so fun. Thank you so much. Wow, so nice to see you. Are you um, students of Mahors also, like Aaron? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm so glad she yeah. sent people over. Thank you, thank you. for being here. Um, thank you. We had lots okay. of fun. As a great, I'm gonna make Audra big again. So watch out, Audra. There we go. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> wow. Um. Really cool. You. Are you also a student of Mahor? There we go. Okay. Well, Audra, thanks so much. This was delightful. Thank you. Really, and brought up so many interesting. And yeah, I don't know, just so many interesting ways of looking at chairs as like places to put things, as places to contain things, as places to visit and and be held, you know, all sorts of great things. It's really great. It was a really great workshop. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to remind everybody, I'm going to put it in the chat one last time, the ways you can share, including uploading um, for our PDF. And then um, you got anything to promote, Audra? Will you tell us really fast what we should buy of yours and where to buy it? <laughs> Um, well, I have a collection. So I do a one person anthology called The Audra Show. Um, I have a collection, um, which you can find on my website, audrastang.com. Um, and I have some other comics on there. Um, 
if you're international, you can reach out to me about shipping. It's just a little more expensive. But um, and I have a new issue of the Audra Show coming out soon in April. Uh, and yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for having me. I really loved seeing everybody's comics and hearing your memories. Yeah, I'm gonna ask everybody to unmute and give you a round of applause. Will we see you at Mocha in a couple of weeks, or or are you um, not going? No, I'll be at L Lancaster Zine Fest in uh, Pennsylvania, which is a smaller show. And I think after that, my next show is um, Van Calf in Canada in May. So if anybody's Vancouver area, mm -hmm. I'll be there. Awesome. Okay, let's give Andre a round. Thank you so much, Audrey. Come back. Thank you. 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 Thank you.